Hi guys and welcome back to a new recent reads video. If you didn't see my last recent reads video I explained in that video how I'm doing reading wrap-ups now and I've got a new system where I do recent reads rather than monthly reading wrap-ups which means I get to talk about lots more books and get to talk about them I think in more detail and get to talk about the wide range of things that I am reading. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you today what I have been reading. It has been a weird time for reading. I have gravitated towards comfort reads which I featured in a separate video what I was reading for comfort. I have been reading lots of books that can take me I don't know a day to read so I was reading lots of kind of romances and just kind of stuff that could take my brain off of the world but I've also managed to read some classics and some other books that I am going to be focusing on in today's video and I think you are going to love hearing about them. So in the first part I'll be talking about the books that I have finished reading and then in the second part I will talk about the books that I am currently reading or have been reading lots of because in May I've read lots but haven't finished any books so so that's why I think this recent read system works because I can still showcase those books because I'm loving them and can't wait to talk about them. So let's begin by talking about Edith Wharton. I started reading Edith Wharton at the end of last year and I love her so much. I've been struggling with my classics reading so far this year which came as a bit of a surprise because I was raring to go but I'll talk about that more specifically in a future classics community reading challenge update but the one author I have been gravitating towards is Edith Wharton and recently I have read two of her books. One is a collection of short stories and the other is a novella from her her. So the collection of short stories is The Reckoning and this is published by Penguin Little Black Classics and it consists of two stories. The first one is Mrs Mancy's View and the second one is the Reckoning. Both were pretty different stories. The first one, Mrs Mancy's View, talks about Mrs Mancy who is an older woman who can't get out of the place that she is living. She lives in this kind of apartment and looks out every day at the view from her window and it's about how that view changes and about development on land and it's also a story about loneliness and I really loved it. There's not a lot to it but Edith Wharton's writing is so beautiful that I couldn't help but want to revisit it as soon as I had finished reading it. It's a story that stayed with me for a long time afterwards and is definitely one that I will read again at some point. And the second story is The Reckoning which I thought was a really interesting story with a great concept. It's about divorce and it's about a woman who has left her husband. There wasn't any kind of reason she just fell out of love with him and then she marries a different man but then that man decides to do the same thing and it's kind of a look at mirroring emotions and how one thing that you do can then affect you in a different way later on and I thought it was very clever. It was kind of difficult to understand at first, it took me a while to get into that one but once I was into it I thought you know what Edith Wharton you are such a genius. So it didn't really have a lot of plot, they are short stories and they're designed to make you think, they are designed to make you appreciate Edith Wharton's writing, she is just amazing but I'd really recommend them, they were super quick, I read them in a morning and they just brightened up my day. She has this wonderful way with words and the way she understands her characters even though they might you know take up a small part of the greater world she's writing in. She just gets them and she manages to kind of burrow into their brains and I really like that. And then the other Edith Wharton I have read recently is Ethan Froome. I really loved this. I wasn't sure what to expect. I love her old New York novels but this is not an old New York novel. This is so different to anything else that Edith Wharton wrote and it reminded me of Wuthering Heights. I think this is Edith Wharton's response to Wuthering Heights in terms of the way that the story is told, the narration style, in terms of the way that you have a story within a story, in terms of kind of the feel of the book 
and, and how that is. It's a very isolated setting like Wuthering Heights. You have the sense that you're getting deeper and deeper into the story as each chapter goes by and I was completely hooked. Like I said I wasn't sure if I would like it because it was so different to anything else I'd read from her but I liked it in spite of that. I don't think I liked it any more, I don't think I liked it any less. I just can't believe that she could write such separate things and still pull all of them off. I just am amazed. At the start of the story we meet a man who is new to the town of Starkfield, Massachusetts and he hears about a man called Ethan Froome who he ends up meeting and there's this kind of mystery around Ethan Froome. He has been in some kind of accident. We know that there's something kind of wrong with him or it's kind of alluded to that this big thing has happened to him which has changed him beyond belief and as our narrator and Ethan Froome get to know each other better, the story starts coming out about what happened to Ethan Froome. And this is a story about star-crossed lovers, about getting into a relationship that you're not happy with and wanting something more. It felt very uncomfortable at times. I wasn't sure with this romance whether it actually was a romance and how that would change depending on who the narrator was. You know that something tragic is going to happen but you're not really sure how it's going to happen or you're not sure if you want it to happen but it's very clear that this book is a tragedy early on and she writes it as one and she writes it almost as a warning and a lesson to readers and I really liked that tone. I think it worked really well in its favour. I still don't know what I think of the characters and I find with Edith Wharton's writing in general I see the characters as players on a stage. They are there to fulfil their roles in the story and so I don't ever really see them as anything but constructs and so it does make you think about your own life and I think it makes you think about things that have happened in your own life and people that you know. Through her characters she is kind of shining a light on you, the reader, and making you answer tough questions about what you believe in and what you think is moral or immoral or what you think is right and I still don't know if I think that all the characters in this book are moral or right. I don't think all of their actions are justified but that's why it's a good story because it makes you think those things and I would love to reread this at some point because I think that every time I reread this I will get something new from it and those are my favourite kind of books. So I would highly recommend this. I love Edith Wharton. She is basically my go-to at the moment when I want to read something that I know I'm going to love so I'm going to read another one of her books soon I think. Next up we have The Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard which I I can't believe that I didn't read this book sooner because it's now one of my favourite books ever. I loved this so much and I started reading it just as we were about to go into lockdown and the world was mad. People were going shopping and buying everything off the shelves. There was a toilet paper crisis and looking back on it now it was such a frantic world and it was so unexpected in the way that people were behaving and the things that were happening. It kind of just seemed to creep up on us even though we had warnings and it was such a roller coaster of emotions and amongst all of that I started reading this book which is set just before the outbreak of the Second World War and it follows one family, the Cazalets. There are three brothers, Hugh, Edward and Rupert and it also follows their wives and their children. The book mainly centres on the children's lives and particularly I loved a character in this called Polly who becomes very anxious about the war and what that might mean and I could relate to a lot of those anxieties around uncertainty and not sure what's going to happen, not sure who from your family is going to be affected, in this case by war. And I love kind of the innocence of it, but also how it explores much broader themes and how it's an adult novel that centres around the lives of children and so you get this kind of 
sense that it's always looking back and a lot of the book was inspired by Elizabeth Jane Howard's own experiences and so she has this great ability to focus in on small things that create this wonderful world. She's great at world building and draws on brand names for different products, looks at things that people would have done. So it is a very nostalgic book and I have since started reading the second book in the series which is just as good but I don't want to read it because I love this so much that I'm trying to draw out the reading experience so it almost feels like I'm reading it in real time because I want to feel like I'm in the world and living it with the characters. This was the way that people live. From that sense there's not a huge plot, you're just reading about people's lives and it's as much about the social history as action and I just love it. I would highly 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 recommend this series. I'm looking forward to reading them all. Taking my time with them for sure but I think they are so so wonderful and I think that you're all going to love them. Another of the authors I've been going to for comfort reading is Georgette Hare and I love her. I started reading her again at the end of last year and I cannot get enough. Whenever I'm in a bit of a reading slump or feel like I haven't read anything and want to read something I go for Georgette Hare and this was Frederica that I read most recently and I think this might be my favourite so far. I really loved this one. It is set during the Regency period and follows Frederica who has a lot of responsibility for her family. She's kind of the oldest and sees herself as an old maid who is probably never going to marry and she just wants the best for her siblings. So she goes to London for the season with her siblings with the hope that her sister will be involved with society gatherings and balls and so her sister will marry successfully and so that's kind of Frederica's duty and responsibility and so Frederica calls on her cousin the Marquis of Alverstoke who she has never met and they kind of have this tenuous link they aren't you know kind of immediate cousins they're kind of the poorer cousins who just turn up on his doorstep one day and he is quite a typical Georgette Hare hero or romantic hero in that he is quite indifferent, he kind of sees it as sport but then figures out that his fascination with Frederica isn't just friendly. There's more to it and more to their relationship than that. Just love everything about her books, they are so feel good and yet she researched so meticulously that you know that everything you read is basically what it would have been like and I love that about it. I don't want to read something or I want to read something that is both historically accurate and really fun. I don't think you have to give up historical accuracy in the search for a good story and Georgette Hare really epitomises good historical accuracy and good story and I love her for it. I am just going to keep reading as many of her books as I can, not sure which one I'm going to read next but if you're looking for a good place to start then Frederica is it. Then the final book to talk about that I have finished recently is Kilvert's Diary which is a diary of Francis Kilvert. I was reading this because I was interested in Victorian Wiltshire which is where I live and I'd had this on my shelf for a while. I didn't really read it page to page. I more had, I also own an illustrated version of it and so I was kind of flicking through it and in the process managed to read all of it. I don't think I paid as much attention to the parts when he's not in Wiltshire so it's one that I'll be reading again at some point but I loved reading about stories of places that I know and have visited, stories from the past and also stories that he was writing about in the 1870s but he'd been told many years before, such as one village which is near to where I lived where somebody, I think maybe his mother had told him that when there was plague in England the road had completely been covered up in grass because nobody was passing through and I loved those kinds of stories and things that I hadn't really thought about and places that I 
I knew and have seen, but seeing them through a Victorian lens was great. So it's a good look at the way that people lived and also looking at rural lives, which I think is really important. It covers almost all of the 1870s and it's just such a fantastic piece of social history and preserving what it was like to live in a rural community at this time. And I love that kind of thing. That is just my idea of the perfect book and the perfect diary. I haven't got a lot to say because I feel like there isn't a lot to say. It's somebody's diary. There's not a plot or characters to discuss, but I would really recommend reading it, particularly if you love the Victorians, because I'd love to see more people read and talk about this. Right then, let's talk about the three books that I am currently reading. I don't know what the problem is with me at the moment, but I'm reading lots of books, but not finishing any of them, and it's really beginning to frustrate me. But one book that I actually started reading a while ago and probably should finish is Veronica Ross Chosen Ones. This is a slightly weird choice from me, it's not anything like what I would usually read but I read Veronica Ross Divergent Trilogy when I was younger, maybe about 13? I think I probably was about 13 and I loved it. I didn't love the final book, I don't think I ever finished that, but I loved the first two so much and I thought that I wanted to give her first adult novel a go because the concept of this is that there are a group of young people who as teenagers solved and kind of fought against this dark evil and what happened is it's basically Harry Potter but what would happen 10 years later when they're kind of still dealing with the aftermath of being involved in something that was incredibly tragic and incredibly traumatic. So it looks at what happens to the chosen ones when everyone has moved on and is living separate lives but there's also this new danger, this new threat that is beginning to rear its head again and I am halfway through and I have really really liked it so far. I loved the first half, I loved that look at traumatic incidents and how you can't just finish the book, like you can't just finish Harry Potter and then all is well. That surely is going to have some emotional impact on your mental health, like it's bound to. You can't just kill Voldemort and then it's fine, like your scar doesn't hurt anymore Harry, great. Surely there is more to that story and Veronica Roth very skillfully deals with this subject. I am really enjoying it and now I'm thinking maybe I should spend this afternoon just finishing it off. I'm not really sure where the second half is going to go but I would really recommend this. I think it's a great way of exploring this subject and if you like things like Harry Potter but feel frustrated that there is more to the story and more to the story than The Cursed Child then this is a great read. Another book that I am currently reading is New Grub Street by George Gissing. This was published in the early 1890s and it was published at breakneck speed. He wrote it in the autumn and he wrote about 20,000 words a week which I mean as a writer I would love that kind of discipline but he was writing it because he was in a lot of debt and this is a very personal story to George Gissing because this looks at the publishing industry during the 1890s kind of the 1880s 1890s period and his frustrations with it about the way that people become famous, the way that they are reviewed, the way that publishing works and not a lot has really changed in a hundred, over a hundred years. Yeah, I mean, I could understand a lot of his frustrations and I can see where he's going with a lot of it, but this is about a writer called Edwin Reardon and his marriage to Amy, who it's not the most successful of marriages. They definitely want separate things and it's not gonna go well for them. I can already tell. I'm on nearly chapter four and we haven't actually met Edwin yet so I'm kind of waiting to get to that point. So far we have been following a character called Jasper Milvane and his sisters and I again I'm really enjoying the social history side of it, kind of looking at publishing and looking at the way that they lived. I'm really liking this so far. I haven't read a lot of it to make 
a big comment on how I'm finding it but I will say that the writing style is super easy and it doesn't read like a really heavy Victorian novel. By the time we get to the 1890s I think writing styles are beginning to change and they do feel easier to read so I'm liking that about it. I think I just need to sit down and spend the time and get a bit further through and then I'll definitely talk about this more. And finally the main book that I have been reading for about the past month or so is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. The final book in her Thomas Cromwell trilogy came out in the past month and I thought you know what it is time to read these books. So I started reading Wolf Hall and then I hadn't got very far through before I'd ordered the second and third books because this is such a masterpiece this is an absolute work of genius. The writing, just kind of the way she tells the story, it is flawless. I am so obsessed. I want to be able to write like this one day. That would be my dream come true. Like, can you imagine? Because it is everything that makes up a good book. This is set in the 1500s and it follows Thomas Cromwell and his rise to power. He was an advisor to King Henry VIII and at the start of the book we see him as a young boy and we see him as he rises from absolutely nothing, an absolute no one, to someone who holds an awful lot of power within the court of Henry VIII. So in this book we mark that rise to power, we see a lot about the marriage between King Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn which hasn't happened yet. So we are dealing with the dissolution of the monasteries, we are dealing with how their marriage came about and the break with Rome and I love that kind of stuff. This is a truly one-of-a-kind book and it's taken me quite a while to read it because I've loved it so much. I've wanted to spend time reading it. I haven't wanted to read it all in one go, I've wanted to take it all in but I'm so excited to finish this and then read the next book and then read the final book. I just think she is amazing. I've been watching lots of interviews with her, I watched a documentary she did with the BBC which I really enjoyed and I'm just so fascinated with how she wrote the book, how she researched it, kind of her whole writing process. I just think it's... I just... I'm speechless. I really love this. I would like everybody to read it for themselves because it's so good. It's amazing. Please everybody read Wolf Hall. So those were the books that I have been reading recently. I would love to know in the comments what you've been reading recently and also if you have read any of the books I featured and have any thoughts on them. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading! <laughs>